Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. Hello again, everyone, and thanks for joining us here for Thursday's edition of Alaska Weather. Yesterday, watching a pretty good storm system here coming out in the Bering Sea, moving eastward with the uh, front and rain kind of moving in waves out across Kodiak Island, spreading up toward the Alaska Peninsula. The low center still back in the Gulf there, or back in Bristol Bay front approaching the northwest coast there uh, during the late afternoon and evening hours. We also had an area of clouds here shifting up to the northeast throughout the day uh, with some showers with it and some breaks into the interior. Not a bad day up over the north slope. Not a bad day also over the southeast coast. Still pretty dry uh, there today as this front pushed moisture just showing up along the coast now in some form of light rain. But uh, you can see a pretty significant low down here to the southwest that should be curving up toward the coast uh, during the night tonight and early tomorrow. That should at least bring some small craft uh, advisories out for the coastal areas there. In fact, there are small craft advisories out for the entire stretch of the coastline here through tomorrow, either for winds or seas. But a lot of moisture here coming back along the North Gulf Coast. In fact, uh, Yakutak picking up over an inch of rain a little over an inch in the last 24 hours, while uh, Seward had about uh, 77 hundredths of an inch of rain. But uh, moving inland, uh, significantly, significantly less. For example, Valdez, about a third of an inch. And then uh, just some areas of uh, showers, the front coming into the northwest interior, uh, bringing some rain with it from the uh, uh, McGrath area northward. Uh, to the Koyukuk Valley there and up along the Arctic coast as the front passed uh, past the eastern Arctic coast today. Winds gusted up to uh, 25 miles an hour at uh, Dead Horse this afternoon and then dropped back to the west there. A lot of uh, clouds here over the Bering Sea, showers over the southwest interior, Yukon Kuskokwim Delta, and back to the north. Uh, but uh, this area of moisture coming eastward, bringing some light rain, a little bit, not much at all, into the eastern Aleutians there. You can see really falling apart as that uh, initial front here pushed eastward there, kind of portions sliding off to the southeast. This area lifting a little bit to the north there, but still some impulses of moisture back to the west. And that'll be uh, moving eastward here over the next couple of days. And you can see another system back out here to the northwest. On the uh, analysis today, the front uh, roughly in this position, heading over toward the eastern Arctic coast and then back down almost right across Nunavak Island. There are showers behind the front uh, scattering out and ending up over the northern Bering Sea with uh, partly cloudy skies here on St. Lawrence Island. Uh, north winds 10 to 20 miles an hour and temperatures just in the lower to mid 40s. High pressure south of the front brought a mostly sunny day to the Pribilof Islands, St. Paul, St. George, reaching close to 60 this afternoon. Skies uh, mostly clear here for Bristol Bay, Alaska Peninsula. Then that uh, warm front pushing eastward, bringing the moisture into uh, Nikolsky and then on Alaska. And this low center, again, uh, kind of a complex low, several uh, separate centers, almost three. One here, another one down there, and then one possibly right in that area all moving eastward and again the main low will pull up off the south coast late tonight and tomorrow so the rain will push inland definitely this evening and uh, periods of rain overnight tonight southeast winds 15 to 30 miles an hour maybe gusts to 35 miles an hour on the south coast there 
And up to the north, uh, again, today, as much as four inches of snow fell over the western mountains here, the Western Brooks Range area. Not much at all, if anything, at sea level with uh, kind of a mixed condition up there this afternoon. Uh, scattered showers here over the northwest. Uh, thunderstorm reported just uh, released a lightning strike just west of Bethel this afternoon. And that sort of pattern could, will continue along and ahead of the front as it pushes eastward uh, tonight and probably again tomorrow as well. And uh, looking at tonight, that front pushing a little bit better chance of rain, a little more continuous moisture eastward there is that triple point. Uh, not very strong at all as far as winds go, but should be enough for some IFR. Uh, periods of light rain and fog there for the eastern Aleutians. A little bit of a break to the west and then some more uh, moisture coming in with the main low center. Otherwise high pressure building into the uh, St. Lawrence Island area. So those winds will diminish looking at light winds here all down across the southeast Bering Sea and the west coast to the Alaska Peninsula. Variable clouds tending to increase. Could see some uh, fog drizzle forming along the uh, mostly the Bering Sea side of the peninsula staying VFR mostly clear on the Pacific side and uh, breezy evening uh, mostly clear skies Kodiak Island dry conditions again all that moisture ending early today pulling off to the east with a low center and uh, rain periods of occasionally moderate to heavy at times on the southern southeast coast with a pretty good swath of moisture extending up to the north and then back to the west uh, Look for uh, showers, uh, Cook Inlet, Kenai Peninsula, some of those a little on the moderate side. Again, risk of a thunderstorm from, uh, well, as far south as the Talkeetna Mountains up across the Alaska Range and all along this frontal boundary right up to, uh, say, Arctic Village or just east of there tonight, uh, but only talking scattered or isolated thunderstorms. Uh, band of rain right along the front itself. And actually, uh, the moisture is mostly behind the front up here to the north with not much in advance due to the southerly flow pulling it off the uh, land mass there. So most of the moisture back to the west could be uh, pretty uh, significant there on the northern or yeah the northern slopes of the eastern Brooks Range or that northerly wind component. Scattered rain and snow showers depending on your elevation here back to the west and more moisture poised to move into the northwest coast but probably holding off until late tonight or early tomorrow. And you can see a uh, chance of rain possibly to the purple offs late tonight. And then that uh, probably will be a little more likely during the day tomorrow there with that front just south of the area, but it pushing across into the Alaska Peninsula. So periods of light rain there with uh, some breaks behind the front for Dutch Harbor on Alaska and showers, uh, especially around the ADAC area with that trough axis. And then front tomorrow, right along the northeast border there, trailing back uh, close to the Alaska range, but some light rain may make it into the Susitna Valley. Scattered showers down across the uh, Chugach, Talkeetna Mountains. Could be a dry day for the most part for the Kenai Peninsula with uh, just some clouds, but uh, Homer, Seldovia could see some sunshine. Looks mostly sunny for Kodiak. Uh, light northwest winds there, maybe a few showers developing over the uh, Lucian Range, but really just uh, some shower activity possible there along the uh, trailing edge of this frontal boundary, clearing out behind it. Definitely cooler temperatures coming in with it, but there'll be a fair amount of sunshine as well with the drier air. Still some thunderstorm activity possible here uh, from the Alaska Range right up along that frontal boundary, possibly even in behind. And uh, light snow, fog here along the northwest coast, IFR conditions, and uh, showers up over the Brooks Range, mostly west in the colder air. A few scattered showers in the Selawuk Valley, down across uh, Buckland, and then some moisture possibly for Shishmaref, but nothing heavy at all. And this system down here to the south, uh, look for possible thunderstorms as the upper trough axis approaches. Small craft advisories could see gusts 30, 35 miles an hour along the coast, especially on the south coast there, more of an easterly direction to the north with some scattered showers. Uh, Juneau to Haines, Elfin Cove, Yakutat, and again, all the way back into Prince William Sound. Taking a look at the uh, first day of the weekend, looking like this, uh, another trough. So numerous showers to the southeast coast, uh, possibly diminishing in the afternoon hours. Here's the next system coming eastward again into the uh, Gulf of Alaska. And that's going to uh, continue off to the east and should uh, probably move through Saturday night, early Sunday morning for the Panhandle for more rain there. 
much uh, cooler conditions uh, Saturday morning, especially for Cook Inlet, uh, even up here over the upper Yukon Valley where the skies are clear. It'd be a pretty chilly morning. And the next, next front bringing uh, snow into the northwest coast, uh, Barrow all the way back down toward Cape Lisburn, possibly Point Hope and into the North Tack Valley. Definitely the uh, western mountains there will see uh, whatever falls will be in the form of snow. Otherwise, mixed rain and snow showers out in advance, uh, but pretty chilly conditions here over the west southwest interior, but sunny with uh, sunshine down into Bristol Bay and that north to northwest breeze there, and pretty good even out here over the southeast Bering Sea, Alaska Peninsula. Risk of a shower for Kodiak Island, mostly as that pulls off to the east, so that moisture will probably uh, fall mostly Friday night and then tend to diminish throughout the day Saturday, becoming partly sunny in the afternoon. And not a lot going out on out here over the Aleutians and the Bering Sea, just uh, some variable clouds with some scattered showers, rain, fog, and drizzle in that area. Temperatures this afternoon along the Panhandle uh, range from 53 here at Yakutat to 57 at Sitka, 59 at Klawak, same thing at Petersburg. Juneau had 57. 53 over at Cordova, Middleton Island, 57 degrees. 55, McCarthy, about the same at Gulcana. And uh, back to the west, clouds, some light rain, 54 degrees in Kenai. 58 down at Homer, about the same in Kodiak. 57, Talkeetna. And lower 60s up in the Tanana Valley, 61 both at Northway and Fairbanks. Delta had 60. Eagle was up to 66 and 63 at Fort Yukon. But back toward the clouds and rain with the front, uh, temperatures in the lower to mid 50s and then dropping into the 40s back uh, over the northwest. Upper 30s for the central Arctic coast, 51 over Kaktovik, 50 degrees in Nome with uh, Galena at uh, 56, 50 over at Ambler. Bettles, 56 degrees today in Shishmaref, 45, 46 at Gamble and uh, lower 50s here uh, from uh, Unalakleet to St. Michael on down to Amonic, 54 otherwise at Macoriac. Mid 50s here over the uh, Cusquam Delta, 55 at Bethel, 54 up at McGrath, and a 57 at Sleep Mute. Uh, warmer with the sunshine down over Bristol Bay as uh, we'll see 64 here at King Salmon with uh, the sunshine pushing it up into the lower 60s along the Alaska Peninsula. A little bit cooler here on the Bering Sea side, 53 on Alaska, but up to 58 at St. Paul and mid 50s for the central and western Aleutians. And the lows forecast for tonight, uh, generally in the upper 40s to lower 50s here over the southeast coast, mostly in the 40s overall of the southeast interior down into Bristol Bay dropping into the upper 30s out along the coastal areas of the Yukon Delta across the Seward Peninsula and anywhere from 30 to 35 up over the uh, north and northwest areas with uh, some 40s, mid 40s up across the Yukon Valley. And for highs tomorrow, generally 40 to 45 in that range here back along the North Slope and Arctic Coast down into the Brooks Range, lower 60s for the uh, upper Yukon Valley zones and then uh, mid 50s back to the southwest coast. Mid 50s here for the Aleutians, although in Alaska could push up to 61 right there. Same thing for Kodiak Island and 55 to 60 across southern Alaska. Roughly the same here for the southeast coast, although the southern areas uh, could get into the lower 60s. Flying weather IFR here over the southern panhandle and down to Dixon entrance, marginal VFR up to the north and then along the north Gulf Coast areas of uh, IFR, mostly from about from west of Yakutat to Cape Yakutaga, probably possibly including Cordova and uh, back in toward Montague Island with uh, marginal VFR over Prince William Sound. That'll extend northward throughout the day and be progressing from uh, west to east uh, with scattered thunderstorms throughout this area. So Tanah Valley, Central Western Alaska Range or Eastern Alaska Range looking pretty marginal tomorrow, but actually starting out the day IFR along the Western Alaska Range and then that'll be improving to VFR throughout the afternoon as well as uh, turning an arm into Western Prince William Sound as those winds swing around to the west, look for conditions to become VFR. IFR in the western Arctic coast, uh, break in between along the central areas, more IFR in the east side. Bering Sea here, southwest of uh, Nunavak Island, 
IFR there across the Perm Lofts all the way down in the central Aleutians and uh, areas to the north though looking uh, pretty good. VFR, southwest coast, up across St. Lawrence Island, Seward Peninsula, Bering Strait, all VFR tomorrow. For the passes, Anatovic starting out marginal, improving to VFR probably by midday. Uh, a little slower for Adigan and uh, starting out IFR becoming marginal throughout the day, possibility of a thunderstorm. Lake Clark, uh, marginal VFR improving to VFR tomorrow, while Merrill starting out IFR and improving to VFR with the IFR probably on the western entrance. Rainy, same forecast, turning out low and then becoming VFR in the afternoon. And for windy, uh, IFR becoming VFR, but the uh, northern entrance there probably only improving to marginal throughout the afternoon hours. Isabel slowly improving, IFR becoming marginal. Mentasta, marginal VFR becoming VFR. And for Tanita, starting out uh, quite low in the morning hours, but that'll uh, improve both paths, especially the east side when those west winds kick in at, uh, to VFR during the late morning into the afternoon. Portage, IFR becoming VFR. Chilkoot and White, uh, northern entrances, VFR, but through the pass into the south, occasionally marginal. Freezing levels showing the uh, cold air, first with the upper low heading eastward here into the southeast coast. So down to about five to 6,000 feet there over the panhandle, 6,000 feet in the northern Cook Inlet down along the Bristol Bay coast. And then you can see considerably colder air up to the north and northwest there with 2,000 feet right down across uh, Kotzebue and the uh, Kobuk, cutting through the Koyukuk Valley. Tighter gradient here in the eastern Arctic coast where the front tends to stall out a little bit. Here's the next system over the Aleutians that'll be pushing eastward. And the upper wind, or the icing, Icing into the southeast Bering Sea with that next uh, uh, system there coming eastward almost to the southwest coast. Areas mostly above 4,000 feet here in the east and then possible moderate icing coming into the southern panhandle. Winds aloft, uh, here's a trough that will be finally moving through tomorrow night for the southeast coast. The main jet to the south but arcing up into the southeast Bering and the Aleutians there. And then the northern branch will be several troughs moving through the interior over the weekend coming up uh, with conditions gradually becoming a little cooler each day. 9,000 feet northwesterly, 20 to 30 knots from the interior back up to the northwest coast. Here's the low possible 40 knot winds uh, across Prince of Wales Island, the southern panhandle there with that system. Southwesterly is 35. 20 to 25 knots at 3,000 feet and pretty brisk ahead of the system pulling northward and then diminishing 25 knot northwest release for Kodiak. Turbulence, occasional moderate chop, southern southeast coast up here in the northwest, smooth through the interior and then moderate chop possible just south of the central Aleutians. After Stargazer, I'll be back with the marine forecasts. <laughs> Scorpion's Mad Tea Party. Welcome to Stargazers. I'm Dean Regis, astronomer from the Cincinnati Observatory. And I'm James Albury, director of the Kika Silva Plot Planetarium in Gainesville, Florida. You know what, Dean? This is my favorite time of the year. It's not your birthday again, is it? Actually, my birthday is this week. But I'm actually excited because two of my favorite constellations, Scorpius and Orion, are perfectly positioned this week to play out a celestial drama in the night sky. Plus, there's a teapot and a very tardy rabbit to throw into the mix. Ah, I see. And for you planet moon scoochie lovers out there, we have an awesome looking pairing of Mars, Saturn, and the waxing crescent moon at the end of the month. Let's show you. Okay, we've got our skies set up for just after sunset anytime this week facing west. Just to the right of the J-shaped star pattern marking Scorpius to Scorpion, you'll see the red planet Mars and the ringed planet Saturn. As the week passes, you'll see these planets slowly moving among the stars of the constellation Libra the Scales. The fun happens on the last day of the month, August 31st. That's right, James. On Sunday night, August 31st, the waxing crescent moon will cuddle up to the planets Mars and Saturn. And depending on where you live, you may actually get to see the moon occult Saturn. 
An occultation occurs when the moon blocks the light of a star or planet. So in other words, you might get to see the moon eclipse Saturn just as the moon is rising. Earlier, I was mentioning a celestial drama between two of my favorite constellations. Well, the first player is Scorpius the Scorpion. As legend has it, Scorpius was sent by Gaia, the goddess of the Earth, to punish Orion the hunter for boasting about what a great hunter he was. So while Orion was out hunting, the scorpion came along and stung him on his ankle. The gods then placed Orion on the opposite side of the sky so the scorpion wouldn't try to sting him again. Here's where our mad tea party comes in. Orion's friend Sagittarius was a centaur, but he was also a very good archer. So he went to go find the scorpion to kill it in revenge for stinging his friend Orion. It can be tough to find all the stars in Sagittarius. However, there are eight stars that really stand out. They form an asterism we like to call the teapot. Of these eight stars, you can use these three to mark the spout, these three to mark the lid, these four to outline the handle, and these four represent the body. As Alice in Wonderland discovered, a tea party is always a lot more fun when you invite friends to join you. So let's modify our story a little bit and say that Scorpius, feeling remorseful for having stung Orion, invites him to have tea. Not wanting to be alone with the scorpion, Orion invites Lepus the hare to join him. According to legend, Lepus was the rabbit Orion was hunting when the scorpion stung him. Lepus the hare is a constellation just to the south of Orion. But like our rabbit in Alice in Wonderland, our rabbit is running late for the party. If you watch the sky throughout the night, you'll see the stars slowly rising in the east and setting in the west. During the course of the night, Scorpius and his teapot are slowly moving across the sky. The problem with this is that because the gods put Orion on the opposite side of the sky from the scorpion, Orion can never catch up to the scorpion. Tired of waiting for Orion, the scorpion dips below the horizon around midnight, taking the teapot with him. Shortly before three in the morning, the handle of the teapot disappears below the western horizon. At the same time, Orion finally appears in the east. So it isn't until almost 4.30 in the morning that both Orion and his Lagomorph companion are completely above the horizon. Much to their dismay, the party is over and the scorpion and his teapot are long gone for the night. So remember, if you're a scorpion and want to have a tea party, make sure your guests are nearby. And if you're invited to a tea party hosted by a scorpion, set your alarm clock. It's easy to do if you keep, keep looking, looking up. up. Welcome back. We'll look for winds here on the central and south coast range anywhere from 20 to 32 knots. And that depends on the exact track of the low center as well as the orientation of the pressure gradient along in advance of the front. But small craft advisories the entire day tomorrow along the entire coastline just due to the seas. Southern inside waters, southeast 20 to 30 knots, much lighter over the central areas, too variable in Canal Glacier Bay. And then for Saturday, winds mostly southerly, 10 to 15 on the central coast. Pretty light up to the north, southwest 20 knots there for the southern zone, southeast 20 for the inside waters in the south, and then southerlies at about 15 on up to the north. The uh, north Gulf Coast uh, becoming westerly after the small craft advisories tonight into early tomorrow. Again, winds will become west at about 15, becoming variable and light for Prince William Sound, northern Cook Inlet. Mostly northwest, 15 to 20 to 25 knots, uh, starting out with small craft advisories for the Barren Islands and Kamishak Bay early on, and then gradually coming down to 20 knots in the afternoon, west to southwest at about 20 uh, for Kodiak Island. And then on Saturday, uh, west 15 here, especially on the east side of the island, and then northwesterly is holding in that 20 knot range uh, for the Barren Islands, Kamishak Bay, but gradually dropping off to 10 knots over northern Cook Inlet. Light variable winds now from the North Gulf Coast and Prince William Sound. Bristol Bay, northwest at 10, south here along the Alaska Peninsula, but on the Pacific side, southwest only at 10 knots, westerlies at 15. 
southwest of Sitkanak. And then those will become uh, northwest at about 20 on Saturday here, but staying light back over the peninsula from a north or northwesterly direction. Bristol Bay, 15 knots, uh, possible 20 knot winds back a little to the northwest. And for the Fox Islands, southwest tomorrow, 15 to 20 knots, westerlies 20 knots for the central Aleutians, turning to a more northwest direction back towards Shimia. Those become quite light here in the western zones on Saturday and really pretty light everywhere. Northwest uh, for Adak and Atka, 10 to 15, variable here for the Fox Islands. And then for the uh, southwest coast, variable, 10 knots to northeast, 15 north of uh, Nunavak Island. Light variable winds for St. Lawrence Island. And then easterly is possibly as high as 20 knots there for St. Matthew Island. Then these go southwest or west-southwest at about 20 in those areas, north to northwest for the southwest coast, 15. Light southwesterlies for the Perbolofs. And here uh, for the Chukchi Sea, northwest 20. Otherwise, westerlies 15 to 25 knots uh, with the 25 knot winds over here on the east end. And then for Saturday, uh, westerlies 20 knots here and southwest or west southwest uh, for the remainder of the Arctic coast, only in the 15 knot range. And for tonight, again, this front uh, coming southeast and eastward, pretty slow movement now, just making it over to demarcation points here by 4 a.m. tomorrow. Areas of rain back to the west, some of that mixed with snow, especially the higher elevations of the western mountains here, some more moisture about to move in. Rain for the southeast coast, rain pushing into the eastern Aleutians, and uh, rain especially south here for the Panhandle tomorrow. Front moving to about this position, most of the rain to sit in the valley northward into the Tanana Valley, clearing out in cooler temperatures in behind, but also more sunshine. And then this system pushes into the Gulf of Alaska Saturday, dry and cool here over the interior. We can see a lot of sunshine from the southwest coast right up into the upper Yukon Valley. More snow or rain and snow moving into the northwest. Have a great evening. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.